It seems like something out of a horror film. You have an aeroplane of which everyone on board is unconscious, including the pilots, but yet the plane continues to fly to its destination on its own. Such case was in fact reality on an August summer's day in 2005. Somehow this simple one hour flight across the Aegean Sea went so terribly wrong. It's the summer season in Europe, which means a very busy time for passenger air travel. In the early and mid 2000s, dozens of small low cost and charter airlines erupted onto the scene in this part of Europe to cash in on the exploding holiday market. Many of these airlines typically leased their planes from other airlines or leasing companies and only operate a small handful of planes. With a small amount of planes, the airlines would typically run them around the clock 24 7 to make more money. Cypriot airline Helios Airways was no exception. A small fleet of three aircraft operated charter flights all across Europe, serving both the northern European holiday market and the local Cypriot economy by bringing in tourists at a lower cost. In their current seven years of service, they have had not one major incident. It's the early hours of August 14th, 2005. This Helios Airways Boeing 737 is just about to land at Larnaca Airport. The crew have just flown the plane from Stansted Airport in London. Once on the ground, the pilots notify maintenance of a frozen door and also reports of abnormal noises coming from the aft left door of the plane. While the crew clock off for the night, the maintenance crew get to work fixing the frozen door. It's nothing too major that a few routine checks can't fix, and the plane should be good to go by the morning. As part of the maintenance checks, the engineer performed a pressurization leak test. Following the procedure step by step, the engineer, to correctly perform the test, has to change the setting on the cabin pressure panel to manual. In the end, the door was fixed, however the engineer, after carrying out their tests, did not switch the knob back to automatic. This tiny, seemingly insignificant step seems small, but is crucial in the events that follow the next day. We must now discuss the pressurization and air conditioning systems on the Boeing 737. As an airplane climbs, the air pressure around it changes. As humans, we cannot breathe the outside air at cruising altitude, so it must be pressurized. We hear this term thrown around a lot, especially by the media, but what does it actually mean? I will try to keep it as simple as possible. As passengers, we need good quality fresh air to breathe comfortably. In a sealed metal tube, this air is limited. So it needs to be sourced from outside. Air is intaken by the engines in flight constantly. Some of that air is taken to the air conditioning packs, where it is compressed and heated before being distributed around the cabin. Without the air conditioning packs working, the people on board the plane will not be able to breathe without assistance from bottled oxygen. However, it is quite common for the crew to turn off the packs for takeoff to get extra power for the engines, but generally throughout the flight they will be switched on. In the cockpit, the crew have a system which allows them to select an altitude for the cabin to be pressured at. Even though a plane often flies upwards of 30,000 feet, the cabin is pressurized to the conditions oftentimes no higher than 8,000 feet. On the Boeing 737 and many other airliners, the plane can perform the function of delicately keeping the pressure where it needs to be and can adjust automatically depending on the circumstances. However, for this to happen, the setting on the pressure panel needs to be set to automatic. Morning arrives in Larnaca. The crew of this Helios Airways plane plan out their plans for the day. Today, the crew will be making a trip to Prague in the Czech Republic, not before making a stopover in Athens as Helios Flight 522. Captain Hans Jürgen Merton is a contract pilot from Germany who was hired by Helios over the busy summer season to fly these holiday flights. He has over 35 years of flying experience and had even flown for Interflug, which was the East German airline before 1990. His first officer today is Pampos Charalambus, another experienced member of the crew at age 51. The flight crew must follow a series of checklists to get their plane up and running correctly. There are checklists like this for all aircraft, step-by-step -step guides for pilots to follow to make sure nothing is missed. On this flight, the crew unfortunately on three separate occasions failed to notice that the air pressure switch was still selected to the manual position instead of auto. 
By default the settings should be in automatic as checklists for shutting down the aircraft like the crew would have done the night before include the switch still being set in the automatic position. However, the engineer who worked on the plane the night before is not a pilot and doesn't know about these checklists and left it in the manual setting. The flight crew simply didn't change the setting on the panel to automatic. Because of this, when the plane takes off, it does not pressurize the cabin. At 9.07, Helios Airways Flight 522 takes off from Lanaka en route to Athens. Five minutes later, confusion in the cockpit begins. A warning tone is trying to tell them that the cabin pressure is too low. What confuses the captain is that this warning tone is the exact same one as a different alarm, the takeoff configuration warning. This warning is only ever heard when the crew begin a takeoff roll with the plane being improperly configured, such as the flaps and slats not being in the right position or the stabilizer trim not being set properly. Another warning warns Captain Merton of an air conditioning failure and this is reported to maintenance at 9.14. Meanwhile, with the drop of air pressure at around 10 to 12,000 feet, the passenger oxygen mask dropped from the ceiling, indicating to the passengers and the cabin crew that something is horribly wrong. Those untrained for breathing at high altitude will begin to feel nauseous and lightheaded, the first stage of hypoxia. Hypoxia is an incredibly dangerous condition where a lack of oxygenated blood to the brain and other vital organs begins to take effect on judgment and the senses. All pilots from PPL training are told of the dangers of hypoxia and the effects it can have on a pilot. And the most important aspect of hypoxia and why it is so dangerous is that oftentimes you do not know that you have it. The crew of Helios Flight 522 are now hypoxic and at 9.20 they give their last message over the radio before going unconscious. The 737 climbs up to its crew's altitude of 34,000 feet just like it was punched into the autopilot. Because modern airliners use a GPS navigation system, the flight management computer, the crew before takeoff already entered the entire flight plan for the plane to fly along on its way to Athens, and so continues to do so without the crew. At 9.37, Helios 522 enters the Athens FIR, Flight Information Region. Nicosia Center notifies them that they have lost contact with the plane. For 40 minutes, the air traffic controllers at Athens try to contact the plane. At 10.45, arrival time comes and goes with still no contact from the plane now flying above Athens. At 10.54, Athens ATC notifies the Greek military of a passenger plane which is not responding to radio calls, and two F-16 fighter jets are launched to intercept the plane. If there is no input by the pilots, once the plane reaches the end of its route, it will automatically circle in around its last waypoint. By the time the F-16s arrive, the plane is circling around the island of Kea. The fighter pilots try to see if they can see inside the cockpit. They radio back, announcing that they see two men slumped over the controls, unconscious. By this time, the plane is now on its reserve fuel, and soon the engines will flame out. This would be where the situation would normally end, but at 11.49, with the F-16 still following the Helios plane, they see movement in the cockpit. There is one person conscious on board. It happens to be flight attendant Andreas Prodromo. Prodromo actually held a UK commercial pilot's license, and likely had knowledge of the situation. He, however, does not have a type rating on the Boeing 737, but is the only one conscious on board. He switches the transponder to 7700, which is the emergency squawk, and attempts to deliver a mayday message. However, the plane is still tuned to the Nicosia frequency and cannot be heard over the radio. He then waves at the fighter plane, and then one minute later, at 1150, the left engine quits and flames out due to fuel starvation. At this moment, the plane's autopilot disconnects and flies tangent to where it was circling, and then begins to descend. Around 10 minutes later, the right engine quits, and at 12.04, the plane eventually comes down into a hill near Gramatico, about 25 miles north of Athens. Flight attendant Andreas Padromo had actually steered the aircraft away from the city of Athens, avoiding any collision with the city. All 121 people on board were killed. 103 of those on board were Cypriots, 13 were Greek, and Captain Hans Jürgen Merton was the only German on board. Of the 121 people on board, 22 of them were children.